Hi there, uh, my name is Adam Holliday. I'm the uh, market manager for uh, the HiQnet software platforms that we have. Um, you may have come across System Architect as being our main HiQnet application. Uh, I guess about um, two years or so ago, Crown and JBL came to us and said, well, System Architect's very good for installed sound, but it misses a lot of the subtleties of live sound software and what's required there. So they asked us to develop a, a software application specifically for tour sound and performance spaces. Um, one of the things we wanted to do in that project, or several of the things we wanted to do, was look at the user's workflow and see how they use software and actually make that the software's workflow as well. So the user can start from a simple uh, starting point and end up uh, almost like a giant wizard, if you like, uh, actually running the show itself. Um, it's the first time, I think, in a, a software application that we've actually seen uh, predictive modeling drive the configuration of the system. So we wanted to save a lot of the user's time. So rather than working in one application for, predict for predictive modeling and then manually transferring the settings, that's embedded in the software and actually starts the configuration process. Um, and we've embedded a lot of the intelligence of the Crown and JBL guys. They know how to put systems together and actually put that into the software to make the software um, know really where the user needs to go so that the uh, eventual sound is far more optimal than it would be if they were less experienced. Um, we wanted to save a lot of the user's time. That's one of the specific functions of this. So rather than uh, requiring the user to create customized interfaces for various different parts of the, of the, uh, the, the way the software needs to be controlled, what we've done is we've actually embedded the, the, uh, what used to be customized interfaces into the software, and we automatically tie the, the parameters of the different devices to those uh, control panels to save a considerable amount of time in system design and we've abstracted all the DSP away from uh, the actual devices, at least in the pre uh, presentation of the user. So why, uh, whether they're using powered loudspeakers or amplifiers with passive loudspeakers, uh, the, the, um, the DSP is, is presented at the system level rather than at the device level. Um, and we've uh, implemented um, some f a far simpler way of actually networking a system together. Obviously all these devices exist on a, on a standard Ethernet network. Um, and, and often that's a complicated part of the system to set up, so we've reduced it to a simple drag and drop to associate devices in the software with the devices on the network. So I'm going to move over here now, and you can see we've got the workflow across the top using the, uh, the, the ribbon, so the user can start here by adding templates and then move all the way to actually running the show at the end. Um, so as I said, we've embedded a lot of the intelligence in the software, so JBL has uh, de uh, designed a number of different templates for array configurations, which the user would then just drop in in here for a simple left-right system, so the, uh, the, the software understands the grouping and the, and the relationship between left and right uh, arrays in this instance. Moving through the workflow, we then go to add loudspeakers. We could do that manually if we thought that we had the, um, the understanding how to do that. We've also, as I said, integrated um, uh, predictive modeling into the software, so I can actually launch the JBL line array calculator for each and every array within the system, so the user can then design uh, the array and actually um, uh, predict the, the, the coverage. I'm just going to cheat a bit and open one that I created earlier. So we've got the, um, the, uh, the, the, the uh, a, a two-tier system here with a single array, and when we say OK, um, the software then loads that particular array configuration, using, again using a different lookup table to see how the speakers would best be circuited and run in parallel, and it also sends down to uh, these arrays in the software um, the information about the, uh, the gain shading and, and everything that I had set up there. So then when it comes to um, amplifying the system, once I've got the configuration set up for the array, I then move on to my next stage. Again, I could add the amplifiers manually, um, but in the spirit of automation, uh, we can just uh, simply select the, uh, the arrays that we want to uh, amplify, and then the software will actually amplify those with the correct number of amplifiers that I've chosen uh, to do it. So you can see it's now added those, uh, those um, uh, racks to the, uh, to, to the system. I'm going to skip a couple of stages and move on to setting the speaker tuning because one of the things we wanted to do was to keep the interface the same for the user, whether they're using amplifiers and passive loudspeakers or powered loudspeakers. So a lot of the configuration for the amplifiers, in fact most of the configuration for the amplifiers, is actually driven from the arrays themselves. So the amplifiers obviously contain DSP and simply by saying that this is, I want to uh, set the crossover for this particular array here, of course behind the scenes is actually controlling the amplifier DSP rather than these passive loudspeakers. Um, then uh, we have our pivotal stage of actually going online to the system. It's optimized for tablet PCs, so this is a nice big fat button here. Um, as I said earlier, 
uh, we've simplified uh, the uh, mechanism of actually uh, networking. So the software is, is the master, if you like, of, of uh, the, 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 uh, the, the settings. And behind me down here, I've got the Crown VRAC uh, product with three iTech HD amplifiers. If I select that there, that should indicate to me, uh, if I select it in the list of discovered devices, the front panels of these uh, devices will flash to indicate that this device here is that device there. So I know that actually that device here is this device here. So I drag and drop from, um, from this list onto this, amp uh, onto this V-Rack here, because I know that's the one I want to do it. And it will now send down all the JBL uh, um, uh, tunings, the, the, the preset files that they've created over many, many years. Um, and all the addressing down to that device. So I can repurpose devices as I roll them out and in and out of the truck. So networking, as I say, has been reduced to a simple drag and drop. I've got the ability to, um, to see different groups. As I said earlier, uh, the software knows um, about the, uh, the, the relationship of the left right array. So we've already been able to create groups uh, automatically uh, of the different circuits within the array. And I have the ability to create different user groups. I can create a group of uh, just the highs, for example right here, optimize for tablet PC. So a pop-up keypad comes up and says, there's my uh, group, and now I've gone through and created user groups. Um, and obviously what it's really doing behind the scenes is grouping the amplifier channels, but it's driven from the, uh, from the uh, visibility of the array. So I can actually forget uh, all about the amplifiers now and just concentrate on what I can actually see and hear uh, in the air. Um, so we set the input sources in exactly the same way, set the input source for the array, and it of course really controls the amplifiers behind the scenes. Um, we've got an integrated uh, system test mode, again, driving the amplifiers, uh, so I can actually uh, turn on the uh, noise generator for the, uh, for the individual amplifiers and go through here and use the arrays and the representation over the arrays as a mute matrix. Again, trying to keep the, the interface consistent rather than constantly shifting around. Um, got the ability then to um, move on to the next stage, actually to calibrate the arrays. Uh, I'm going to turn that off. There we go. Um, so in here, I've got two or three different um, uh, uh, panels that traditionally would have been um, user uh, created and again, taking a lot of time. Um, so in here, I can um, overlay the, uh, the array shading directly on uh, the interface here and actually uh, shade any of the, uh, the circuits within, um, the, uh, within the system directly from, the, from this interface. We have a, uh, a tune system mode, the next stage of the workflow in which the user will be now be able to um, call up uh, EQ for any of the arrays here. So again, abstracting the DSP away from uh, the individual devices and just viewing it at the system level. So very much entering this system design at the system level rather than the collection of devices. Um, and then uh, we also, also have delay overlaid over the arrays, again, controlling the, um, the, uh, the DSP within the amplifiers that they're connected to. And then an integrated show mode Give, believing that the configuration has now been completed, where we turn the arrays into monitoring uh, systems. So uh, over here, we've actually got the, uh, the, the meters of the amplifiers, the input and the output meters. You can see that I have this particular rack connected to these bandpass inputs here. So these now become meters for monitoring the levels, the input levels, the output levels, the load monitoring, uh, thermal conditions, AC. And I can also get back into these uh, EQ panels here. Um, and actually, we've actually reduced the ballistics a bit so that in a, in a show situation, you don't scare the front row of the audience by suddenly giving you a lot of gain. And of course, all of this, as I say, um, is at the system level. So you're really designing the audio system, not a collection of devices, which is where this really sort of moves forward in that, in that fashion. And that takes us to the end of, uh, of, of, of the workflow. Um, and really, the, one of the important parts is that the software never gets in the way of the user. It's always able to, um, to anticipate the next step because the workflow is embedded, therefore it's able to present the user with exactly what they need at each and every step of, what, of a fairly complex system configuration. Any questions? Does this run on uh, PC and Mac? No, it's a PC software. PC, P PC yeah. So you, okay. yeah. And it's exclusively for JBL products? Uh, it is for JBL loudspeakers and Crown amplifiers, yeah. yeah. And if you want to get more technical about stuff, mm -hmm. because you know, sound engineers by their sure. very nature like to fiddle yeah, with of course. Stuff, does the software allow you to get in there and fiddle? You can. You can uh, bury deeper into the uh, individual devices um, if we disable the view of the band passes, um, which I can do here. And then I can actually get in here and launch the individual panels for the individual devices if they wanted to get in there and be far, be far more detailed. So this is the, the panel for the VRAP. 
so you can still get to any parameter that oh, yeah. you would normally be able yeah. to get to. Abs absolutely, okay. yeah. yeah. But, that, but in many respects, what we're trying to do is consider that advanced rather than the entry point. Uh, I think you know historically that's been the entry point, and then the user needs to break that down and create the control interfaces for the system. Whereas what we've done is start with the control interfaces for the system and allow them to bury down to those deeper levels.